A beautiful afternoon to you. Many thanks for joining us on the program Flipside. And I'm your regular host, Oloi J. Oikohai. Today on um, Flipside, we will talk about World Information Developmental Day. And this is a day been sent aside by the United Nations. And to discuss this with me, we have the person of Mr. Sui Ayola. Good afternoon. Are your daily. Are your daily. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Now, first off, we want to know the reason why the United Nations decided to you know, set out this day to enlighten the public concerning information developmental strides. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. Let me first say that uh, Hachibul is doing a wonderful job. I just going into these premises and I saw a lot of changes. Okay. That's a nice one. Yeah, the World uh, Information Development Day was instituted by the United Nations in 1972 but became effective October 24th, uh, 1973. Mm -hmm. The United Nations General Assembly took that uh, decision via the resolution 3038 with the purpose of drawing or uh, galvanizing public opinion towards development problems, especially in developing countries. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? Is majority of the activities center around the media, mm -hmm. organizing the symposia, media workshops, and mm -hmm. to ensure that everything that has to do with issues of problem of development mm -hmm. is brought to the general public with the sole aim of getting the developed countries of the world to pay attention to those issues in those uh, countries. Mm. And I think um, it bothers uh, on the fact that, like we say in Africa, mm. when a neighbor is eating the wrong insect, cockroach, yeah. and you don't take action, mm. at night when the cop comes, mm. you too, you won't, uh, you won't sleep. So they need development because if, for instance, the African nations that we are calling developing or other develop and the rest, if you remain at that level, yeah. they will also bear the brunt. It's already happened. Mm. Uh, just two days ago, there was this report by the Nigerian Medical Association that over 9,000 medical personnel left Nigeria for UK alone. We are not yeah. talking about those who, who travel to Canada, to America, and other, other countries. Mm. UK alone, that figure. Mm. So you know the effect. Here is a country we are still grappling with the issue of uh, health facilities, issue of healthcare delivery, and then you have that big chunk of the personnel moving out. So the brain drain we are talking about is as a result of it's part of development problem. So these are the issues the area. And what are they saying is that come, these developing countries should focus more on infrastructure, focus more on technology, focus more on things that could aid rapid growth mm. of the economy. And um, basically that is why a deal is set aside 24th of October every year to mark that day. Okay. And then to sensitize the public. All right. Now, um, some persons will talk about media and information literacy. Um, to some persons, it will be like, okay, we don't understand the meaning of media and information illiteracy. Why? Well, <clears throat> let's just use the Nigerian, um, Nigerian as an example. Yeah. What is our literacy level in this country? Mm. For instance, I'm from the print media. Even among the leaders, mm. those in authority, those in power, how many of them is really? I'm not talking about the general public. Then you talk about the electronic media, it's even worse off, and I will tell you why. This program is live, right? Yes. How many homes in Nigeria, in Benin City, mm. where we are talking from, yeah. can boast of electricity as we right speak? Right now. Right mm. now. Mm. So we, we, it's, uh, it's a long way. We have a long way, a long way to go. Beyond the fact that, okay, for instance, an average newspaper goes for 200 naira. Mm. Is it a man that doesn't have food to put on the table you expect to go and buy? When we left universities and we were looking for a job and the rest, we were going to media, what do you call it, um, vendor stand, yeah. on Tuesday to go and read Guardian, mm. 
another newspaper Thursday looking for adverts and everything. Mm -hmm. And when at times the vendor, because he wanted to sell, he asked for. So a few of us who gather together will contribute money and give. It got to a point that we started doing uh, pool buying. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by pool buying? We put money together, we just buy one copy. So we read, I read, I'll pass on to you and mm -hmm. the rest. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's part of the issue of problems of development. Mm -hmm. Our literacy level, the media, and the, forget about it. The Nigerian media is very varied, it's very active, it's very strong. But access to the information, information. that we're pushing out yeah. is where the problem lies. Mm, mm. Okay, in uh, the month of uh, September, for almost three weeks, my newspaper and other newspaper could not get to worry because, because of bad, of flood. bad yeah. road. Mm. Then it was also even okay, issue the, of okay, flood. Okay. You know, a portion of worry, okay. what do you call it now, from that to Lobo end, yeah. got cut off for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. No newspaper coming mm. from Ibadan, Lagos, mm. could get to worry. So what happens that those uh, three weeks? Now we are talking about flood. Mm. Bayelsa is cut off, Potakot is cut Scott off. Turf, yeah. I was reading in the news yesterday that they kidnapped the whole bus of uh, students going to school in Enugu, uh, Axis. Yeah. There was another information. If you are traveling from uh, Potakot to Weary, don't pass there because of kidnapping. And then this newspaper will have to go there. So, you know, it's a lot of uh, issues. And mm. I think... Um, until those in authority begin to pay attention to that. Information is very key. Mm. Because, for instance, the era of social media has come and has spoiled everything. True. The only people that could regulate, that could bring a kind of little sanity into it are the traditional media, like mm. the electronics, the newspapers, and the really like that. Like we just analyzed, the issue of electricity is there, Accessibility is there, affordability is there, then circulation and the rest. So a lot of, mm. whole lot of problems. Okay, so how do you feel government can actually help in ameliorating this different things you talked about, bad road, electricity. We know of so many persons that even um, up to network providers, we find some persons talking about, okay, I had to climb the tree to be able to get access to listen to um, the news, to be able to get access to actually call or do so many things. So how can government come to the aid of so many persons out there? Fortunately, I work in a network uh, providing a uh, company, yeah. telecommunication company for a period of 60 years. Mm. So I'm in a better position to tell you that it's a lot of problem. Mm. The major problem we have is power. The government can take conscious effort, yeah. fix the issue of electricity in this country, then every other thing will fall in place. You talk about the telecommunications, talking about people climbing or going to a section of the community yeah. to go get, to signal. go and get signals mm. and the rest. Mm. The company that I work for, Pioneer, I don't want to mention them so that you don't share me for <laughs> I advertise for them. Pioneer Rural Telecommunications in Nigeria. And the idea, the owner of the business just said that, oh, well, telecommunication, fine, it has come to stay and the GGSN, but take it to the rural uh, areas. areas yeah. areas. Mm. You are laying your fiber optic cable. Mm. The community boys are coming to court it. Mm. You get to the, go and check. There's no telecommunication company that is connected to electricity. They are using generators. Mm. How much is a liter of diesel? Because the generators are running on diesel. Mm. Diesel is about above 1,000 naira per liter. Now, add that one to the problem of vandalization of their facilities. Mm. And everything. So in a situation where the government, yes, government cannot do everything, mm. but government can provide the basic needs. And the basic needs that can oil, that can, you know, galvanize our economy to a point that all these problems will be eliminated is fixed power. Mm. Fix the issue of power. Majority of these guys, though that's not an excuse, involved in crime and criminalities are also jobless. Somebody that was running a bathing salon before all of a sudden you could not afford to buy. I just, as I was driving down here, I stopped over at a fuel station. I bought a fuel, mm. liter of fuel at 200 naira. <laughs> For crying out loud, a man running a bathing how much will he charge his client or the salon? How much will he have to run? Generator power generator from money for, to for, for each there. person. So you need to fix that. Yeah. When you fix that, then pay attention to the issue of security. Mm. To travel from one place to the other is becoming 
an issue. Yeah. So, Gone are those days when you want you to know, travel, you, you actually before, start praying for I, a safe by, journey. Before I would pick, I enter mm. my car by 10. Yeah, and just, morning, and just and go then safely. I'm going to my home state yes. in the city, and then before 4, I'm mm. already. Mm. Happy. You, can't do, mm. you travel early, you are kidnapped. You travel late, you are kidnapped, or you are robbed. And everybody mm. is genuinely. Mm. Look at the recent incident of Friday here. Apostle Suleiman. Yeah. Okay, for instance, if a man who had three policemen and policemen in his convoy could be attacked, that will how much more you and I that we just sent our cars and then we are the mercy of the Lord. So, mm -hmm. government needs to fix the issue of power. It's very key. Okay. You shouldn't joke with it. Okay. Once you do that, mm -hmm. then every other thing will be for the When people are, for instance, even if it is 50,000 naira is making it, you find it difficult to be encouraged or to be persuaded to come and involved in the crime, but when you sit down at home, you have nothing doing, and the axiom is there, and it's constant, it's terrible, it's, it, it, it's, you can't dispute it, the devil finds job for the idle hand. Okay, now when we talk about World Development Information Day, now um, looking at the rural community, do you feel they are being given 100% attention? Nothing. The rural community, I'm from a rural place, nothing. My community, I went home the last time, I went to my hometown, I spent about five days. The bulb in my room did not blink once. So when you are talking about work information day, yeah. development day, yes. and the rest, yes. and you want to pass that information, information to them, how do they yeah. get it? Mm. The only thing people, when we were growing up, you listen to radios, and then in the evening we we'll gather in in homes of the few people that will afford television. Sure. But virtually every home today mm. can afford to buy television and all that. But you put the television, they just becoming a kind of aesthetic value in your city room. No electricity to power it and everything. Mm. So the rural community is cut off. And even here in Benin City, you are talking about an average educated person on the road doesn't even know what you are talking about. Yeah. That is it. Mm. So the issue, they are fine, and we are talking about something that was established in 1973. 1973, do your arithmetic, and you get the number of years. So we still have a lot to do. Like I said, me being a media person, I have my bias for the media. Mm. I will tell you that the media in Nigeria today is operating against all the odds. Mm. That everything that has been put in place to militate against the effective operation of the media yeah. in Nigeria, the idea that's why that we are still surviving. Yeah. We have to, I mean, beat our chest and say yes. But the rural place, if you ask me, and in reference of sincerity, I will tell you there's nothing there. So, how do you feel um, this gap can be bridged? Yes, the gap can be bridged if we begin to take that those conscious efforts. For instance, the development we are talking about, mm. it has to do with him, uh, physical development mm. through infrastructure. Mm. What of capital, human capital development? The rural area you are talking about, we're supposed to provide road in the rural areas, mm. your feeder roads. Mm. When we're growing up in my community, we we'll see that local government will bring in caterpillars and regrade our roads, yeah. create other roads, yeah. access road to the farms and yeah. everything. Yeah. Now, the autonomy of that local government is still there. Because if you want to develop the rural, for instance, you don't have somebody in Bene City here as House of Assembly member representing Yekori or one. Yeah. Who doesn't go to Yekori or one yeah. until the next round of election? Yeah. But you have a councillor representing the people in uh, Ibiosi ward there. We should be able to say, okay, this, who, is, what this is, is what these people yes. need and the rest. But yeah. all those things are not there. Mm. Allocation camps, everybody, not only in every part of the, all states of the federation, they're waiting for the governor, mm. the governor to give. There was a time in the state in the southwest that a friend of mine was a local government chairman. He told me, he said every month the governor will sign, they will submit their, what do they call it, pay, uh, Salary voucher, whatever yeah. you call it, to, pay, uh, yeah, voucher. They are mm. uh, salary schedule to okay. the government house. The governor will look at it, approve money for just the payment. Okay. Of it. Then we now be okay. Chairman That's of, for the pay slip for pay that. Slip, yeah, yeah, for that year. Then mm. chairman, okay, this guy is a lawyer boy. Look, okay. give him additional ten million. Mm. This other woman that is not lawyer, give him three million. Mm. How do you develop the rural area? Mm. So we need one restructuring. Mm. Restructuring is that, that take the power back to the people. When we begin to have leaders that are, I mean, uh, those in positions of authority that are not real rulers, 
you know there's a difference between a leader yeah. and a ruler. Mm. A leader listens to the people, he follows the people, so he listens to them, he asks for their opinion. Mm. A ruler mm. gives Just order, give gives orders. direction and everything. Yeah. It's part of it. Restructuring. Mm. Mm. Until you restructure, until you take the power back to the people, mm. until we go back to the basis where the local government is functional, is effective, mm. you are not likely to have any development at the rural area. Okay. All right, um, it's been said that um, the way we create and consume information has changed significantly in recent years. And also, um, more than half of the world population right now, um, including 17% of youth globally, are online. Now, do you feel that the information this youth, 70% of youth globally are online, do you feel the information they are getting is something important, is something that is concrete, is something that will actually tell them, okay, this is what you're doing good and this is not what you're doing well. I think what you mean, that what you said, 70% of the world youth are online. Online. Yes. You are talking about the social media. Mm. That is just the simple language for it. Yeah. The question we should ask is just, what are they doing with that? The access, information. The information. Yeah. Where, which site do they even visit? Mm. When you get to everybody, just check. Take just a cursory look at your children's uh, Android phone mm. and the rest. Go check the sites they are visiting. Mm. Is it is not something that is useful. For instance, yesterday I had a heated argument on a platform created for my a group. Your group. Yeah, yeah. A friend, I mean in mm. my community. Mm. And I said, look up. We come in here every now and then, mm. talking all sorts of things. You just pick information from somewhere you pay. I'm Whereas the data you are using to post all this, you mm. could go to Google and say, okay, somebody told you information, 78 people died in Tarabas. Mm. Why don't you just copy that or type it on Google and say, and then Google will answer you, will tell and you. And verify. Ah. Mm. So what kind of, what do you use? You are just online. Online doing what? Online on Instagram, posting photographs, looking for the fashionista, mm. looking for the next gossip about who celebrities' marriage has collapsed. Mm. How's that the information you are talking about? And this era, this era we are in, this, yeah. uh, this uh, what do they call it, era of social media, mm. is, I mean, it's, it's another ball game. It's another ball game. So it's not issue of the number, the percentage of the youth that on the uh, online, what do they do online? How relevant is that to their lives, to development, to even personal, mm development. Okay, is there a way that um, the government can actually checkmate these things? No, 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 no. Don't you just go there. Mm. Don't just ask government to checkmate that you are calling for dictatorship. Yeah. Look at what they did the other time. You just all of a sudden fear by fear to just ban the uh, Twitter, Twitter and the rest. Yeah. And then, please, mm -hmm. <laughs> the kind of people we have in government now, mm. now are not the type that you give that kind of liberty to. If they have their way, this government we cut off the air you and I breathe. So don't just, it should, it should even come there. It's a free for. The social media life is a free for. Let it be on that. Little by little, a time will come that we will get to that place that on our own will begin to. For instance, I see the information. Once I, you post anything to me, I read the headline, it doesn't make anything, I delete right off. It's not everything you post to me that I want to. It's not every video you send. It's just as a matter of fact, for a very some close friends, I told them, please. Can I have a kind of caption for whatever you are sending to yeah. me? So that it gives me an idea of what Watch, I want to yeah. have. Mm. For example, I just sit down. You don't even know my, my disposition towards sanguinary issues, bloodletting issues. You just post video of people head being decapitated. You don't even know whether I can collapse at the sight of blood. <laughs> and, you're, and that's what exactly what we do. Mm. But yes, I feel it should be regulated, but not by this government. Okay. And please, please, it shouldn't be there. Okay. All right. Then looking forward to its, um, education, we find so many persons go say, okay, we have e-learning right now. Do you feel information can actually, or one can actually have a course, an education via, through the internet? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of people that stayed in a year. They have finished courses in universities 
Actually, so other than the internet giving um, or bloggers coming out to say give contents that are not relevant, we can also have contents that are relevant, you know educative of, content. You know the issue of bloggers mm. is a difference, another ball game at time. Yeah. There are some people, you call them, what do they call them, social media influencers. Influencers. That have influencers mm. that mm. don't have any business mm. yet. Mm. There are some blogs that ordinarily a normal human being that wants to keep his sanity should not even go there. Yeah. And the rest. But when you talk about e-learning, I think that one is more structured, more institutionalized. Mm. Now, most schools are doing it. Most schools are doing it. And it became very prominent during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, lockdown yeah. and the rest. Yeah. Well, you know, virtually law schools were doing e-learning and the rest. But yes, how effective is e-learning and how effective can e-learning be in a country that is battling with the issue of power yeah. everything comes to that or you just measure the issue of network mm. you buy data you are online you've logged on and everything the network just disappeared yesterday morning till for almost three hours i couldn't do anything online the network just disappeared and then when it came back, nobody gave any explanation. Nobody mm. gave any excuse. You just, just find yourself. Just, just yeah. find yourself that your messages yeah. are coming in mm. again. You say, oh, thank mm. God. It's back. It's back. So ordinarily, yeah, we should be getting towards it. It shouldn't, doesn't mean that we have to be inside the brick and block to sit down and then begin to learn and mm. everything. Mm. If we are advancing. But the major problem is what we even aid that, the platform that can aid that is power. Mm. <laughs> Fix our power. If any serious government that comes in and fix and fixes power, I tell you, we we'll achieve a lot. Okay. E-learning for me, yeah, is okay. I did one or two of those e-learnings, and it's just as a matter of fact, mm. I hardly, you know, most of these, especially you know, meetings and the rest. I've done interviews. You don't, need, you know, before as journalists, you have to see the person physically. You have to go there. You have to. Uh, what do you call it now? Roll your tape or yeah. whatever you call it. Or, but you don't need that. Okay. Just, okay. I can call and say, okay, fine. Even on a WhatsApp mm. video, sure. interview a couple of people and then, okay, fine. Okay, now someone out there might actually be thinking or asking, are there rights both online and offline as per internet consumptions, getting information from the internet? Rights. Yes. That is the right. Of, for instance, we are talking about social media. Yeah. You are married. Mm. Somebody sees you outside, talking to, like a colleague who doesn't know you. He snaps your photograph and puts it there. Mrs. So 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 caught in a compromise. The Ferris Act or something. All those things. Yeah. And there are rights. Mm. I believe there are no rules, and we are yeah, we've taken down. Telling you there's a couple of, uh, what do you call it? This is so called uh, social media. Mm. Let's have we brought them to come and apologize. Okay. Some tender written, some came physically. Yeah. When you do the, there are rights. There's no, okay. there's, yeah, there are mm. rights. Okay. There are some blogs, there are some blogs that even when you send them material, then they won't post. Okay. It's like, for instance, now a reporter sends me uh, an it, information. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Please go and get to the second channel. Mm. I, I know that. This one is ah, because you can be sued. Mm. You can be sued. And a lot of these guys are, especially the internet users, yeah, the, the social the media. New, guys. The new media. Oh, the new media. Mm. Are, a lot of them are in court. Mm. A lot of them. A lot of them have closed shops. And many more will see closed shops. Okay. Only the serious one will survive. Okay. Yeah. Now, as a columnist now, who verifies the information you give out? Now, this is it. The column, a column is different from editorial content, yeah. editorial policy of a newspaper. Yeah. A columnist, as a columnist, whatever I put on my column yeah. is my personal opinion about that topic. And okay. there's a guiding principle for it. Okay. If you are going to be a columnist, yeah. you must know the subject you want to talk about, know the subject, do your investigation, your and research. then you must take a stand on it. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. Unlike if I'm reporting now, mm. I'm in night TV studio. Yeah. I want to report here. I cannot put my own editorial opinion mm. into that. Mm. I report exactly what your director said, what the head of news says. Mm. That's all. Mm. But in column, I can sit down. Like, for instance, my last column was um, on the shooting of uh, uh, 
attack on uh, okay, Suleiman, uh, Suleiman. Apostle Suleiman. Yeah. I took, I did the analysis. Mm. I started from the guy, especially that guy that was killed, the suspect that the police eventually killed. Mm. That was the trust of that color. Mm. I took a position. Okay. For me, they killed that guy deliberately. And this is not the first time I started a sample of the kilo V in this town that was arrested in 2004. I did that report. Shot the introductory paragraph uh, to that column was a quotation from my 2004 report on how OV who was arrested, mm -hmm. life was, and then later, days later, they called us to say he was shot dead while trying to escape. I did that one, talk about Yusuf, the guy who started Boko Haram, mm. was arrested by the military, handed over to the police, and was shot at the uh, entrance to uh, Maduguri headquarters of the... This is one thing that so many persons are talking about, freedom of expression. Um, you find a, a blogger or anyone, a social media handler, come out to say, oh, there's freedom of expression, so I can say whatever I want to say. But first off, what is freedom of expression? The, I, can't, I won't give you a definition for freedom of expression because it's a very broad, broad but not even that it's broad, it's a very sensitive issue. Okay. Everybody hears, and that is where the problem, one of the major problems of this new media we are talking about, yeah. your freedom of expression, does it cover you saying anything, anything? about anybody? Mm. And I've seen a lot of that. No, this is the problem. You know that one single information, that wrong information that you put on the net, will go a long way mm -hmm. before you know it. And you know, you say, I, I, I did PR job for a couple of years. You say, you call it clean up. Mm -hmm. What you say, clean up? You don't clean up anything. Yes, you can talk to one of the two persons. You say, bring, bring it down. Put bring it, it down. down. What yeah. are the individuals that have copied it? Mm -hmm. I have two uh, WhatsApp numbers. Any information I want to keep for myself, mm. I copy it and put it on the other list so mm. that if I want to use it, if it. So that is why we need to be very careful. Mm. Your freedom of expression stops where the right of another person is belong, uh, starts. Yeah. Your freedom of expression does not allow you to say things you are not sure of. And mm -hmm. that is why in the traditional media, the golden rule is there. There's if you are a body in doubt, to govern if you are in doubt, aspect. what do you do? You don't publish. Yeah. If you don't you are in doubt, you don't broadcast. Mm. I was discussing for your uh, director before we started this session. Yeah. I was talking about the Abasha era. The dear Abasha died. He was, mm. was telling me about the, the 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 trauma they went through because nobody was sure they needed to be. Sure. And then mm. they were saying it or not that they did but as a responsible medium, mm. you need. To, to be, be sure. very sure that yeah. this information is correct, mm. is accurate, is and factual, authentic. is authentic, yeah. and it is not damaging to the character of the person you are talking about. Mm. You take it. That doesn't mean that oh, that straightforward. Especially when it comes to government mm. and the rest, you see stealing and the rest. When you are sure of that, you can go to town with that. I don't have any problem. Mm. But what do you get in the social media nowadays? Gossips, things that are not even necessary. Robbing things that are, that doesn't in any way aid the development in any. What is my business with uh, uh, a married man and a married woman going to? What was that? What's my issue with that? Okay. Is that what you are projecting? I mean, meanwhile, as you are projecting that your uh, what do you call your local government chairman is moving millions of naira every month to something. no development in your area. Instead of focusing on that and everything, you are busy targeting uh, who is dating who, whose marriage is going to collapse, who married the second wife, who shouldn't marry the third husband. How is that that an issue? So when you talk about freedom of expression, it's a very delicate thing. Mm -hmm. I cannot just come in there and begin to call people uh, people's name because I'm on air. And like this, ITV. No, it's not done. Anything you are going to say, be, be sure of it. Yeah. And okay. then you are not sure of it, be ready to go in for it. Okay, now you just said be sure of it. Now, do you find people building trust on um, the media? The TV, radio, no. newspaper, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. all of yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I can tell you a lot of people will tell you. Whatever I see in so 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 television, okay. I know it's authentic. Okay, especially when they have trust, trust. on that. Yes, particular and that is where station. the media, the media practitioners, we okay. the media practitioners, we need to be we need to guard that on jealously. Okay. For instance, 
I have about 12 reporters that I go through their report. And if I have any doubt of anything, I bounce the story back. Mm. Go and get me a registry. As we are coming in now, they call me from my head office about a story concerning Nam De Kalu, what we reported and what other people are reporting. And I called my reporter. I said, no, 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 you missed this angle. It's the biggest angle. He said, yeah. oh, God, I was in court. Nothing like that happened. Mm. End of story for me because I should be able to build trust in him. And that is where, like a station like ITV, you can't just allow anything on air. Mm. Yeah. So people through that will build confidence. Oh, is that news I tell? When they say, oh, something happened, mm. somebody will quickly go and turn it to ITV. Can I? And, he and see it, if it's if, true. If it is, he won't yeah. know. Once he sees it on ITV, mm. he knows that it's true yeah. because he knows that you will do due diligence and everything. True. For instance, if anything, and they say, say is it on channels? Mm. They say it's on channels. Yeah. Is it on Arise TV? He says it's on Arise TV. Mm. Is it on ITVC? Is it on uh, ITV? Mm. Is it on TVC? Mm. Once all those are one and everything, even if NTA is saying contrary, I won't bother myself about that. Okay. So we need, and that trust will not come from the public. We are the one. Let it be that at any point in time, that whatever is information you are dishing out, either from the radio or from the television or on your, the pages of your newspaper as something that you can stand by. Mm. I did a column about the guy that came from America and I was killed, kidnapped, the family paid five million dollars that the cops was taking back to America to go and be buried. Somebody read it and called me, shouting, yeah, 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 you are an enemy of the government. Nothing like that happened. I just kept quiet. He said, I said, no, now, please go answer. Later he called back, I'm sorry, I never knew that this kind of a thing can happen. You should be sure of what you are saying. Mm. And that is how you can build the trust of the reading or the listening public. Okay. It's not in the public that should be building trust, or you are to build that trust to say that anything you can go to bank with any information that is emanating from ITV. Okay. It's your responsibility mm. as a station to do that. Okay, so that every station has the right to go search, and whatever it's being brought out has to be the truth oh, and yes. has to be authentic. Okay, fine. Let me give you an example. Years mm. back, I think years back, there was a demonstration in Ring Road mm. by military pensioners. Mm. Military pensioners, Ring Road. ITV was the only station who reported it that one of the retired military pensioners disarmed a soldier. Mm. Because they brought in soldiers, they were shooting and everything. And the guy went there and disarmed. I was a reporter. We wrote the report, but you know our own, but ITV, oh, everybody, the military authorities and everything, and I think they came to this studio, ask your people here. They showed them the tape that this man actually, because they never knew that anybody was recording them. Mm. Uh -huh. And that is the advantage that the television has. The television house has over the printing the media. Newspaper. You, can, you yeah. have the, uh, what do you call it? Visuals. Your tape, your visual, your visual. Mm kept in your library. Mm -hmm. They came, they were struggling and everything. Acts around there, those mm -hmm. who are the old ants here around there, they will tell you that, that particular, very graphic. Everybody said, no, it's a lie. I can you say they disarm my name? And then their commander came and they showed him the tape. Okay. That is trust. So for instance, next time, ITV runs a story like that, nobody will doubt it again. Mm -hmm. Not even those in authority. Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right, so in essence, Ward Developmental Information Day, now, what do you have to sell, tell, uh, sell out, yes, sell out to the public that this day needs to be celebrated and this day has to be given out, not just to the urban community, but also to the rural development? Yeah, like, we, like we said at the beginning of this program, the essence is to focus attention on development problems, especially in rural, I mean, in developing world yeah. countries. Mm. And the idea, the overall aim is to galvanize the developed world to come into the ease of those. Now, the idea is this. If you don't speak, okay. how do we know? Okay. So it's not about the media alone, mm. the, individuals the individuals on the streets. Yeah. For instance, your community has been there without road, without electricity for, okay. that's a community in my city state, a local government, born in local government, for almost three years, no electricity. Okay. In this era of social media, it shouldn't be. Okay. You so keep on hammering it. You keep on shouting it. Mm. I'm here now speaking now from mm. Ugui, Yoko, the road is bad. Mm -hmm. Can this government come and fix that road, complete the project, it started? Don't make it an interminable contract. These are the okay. issues we are talking about. Okay. So the people themselves need to get involved. All right. 
give that information. Yes, good mm. journalists, media practitioners, our duty is to go and look for the information, be it we are not spirits. Okay. So the information too will come from somebody, mm. then you now go and investigate. And then when you find out that it is true, mm. disseminate it then and look at the difference between CNN and others. Once CNN picks on your story, until they get to to the root of to the reason, matter, they, they don't. Yeah. But here yeah, we just do one or two, three years because we are looking for commercial news and the I can blame the ownership. You can't blame the ownership of this uh, electronic. <laughs> they are paying. You know how much you are paying to power this place? Mm. Ah, so you need to get that money. Okay. But because they are grants, they, they pick on your one single story. Yeah. Yes, they are on it because okay. they want solution to it. And I think that is the idea. That is what you should be doing. And then this, our friends, our colleagues in the new media can help a lot. Because they are on bed. You know, the, the competition there is that food for the kind of eyeballing into their site. How many people visit their site? That's what mm -hmm. they are looking for. That's, that's, uh, every now and then, breaking news. They say breaking news on this blog. You see it as breaking news there. Yeah. People come in module. All right. It has been an exciting time with you today on Flipside. Today, word information for the mental day. And remember that information is key information is power so speak up and let everyone know what is actually happening in your community in your surrounding and in the society so i'll be seeing you again next week for another exciting time to have yourself a blessed day bye